All right, well, now I'm out here on the auto show floor, and I've actually found the Tahoe Hybrid. So let's take a look at what makes it unique. Starting with the front end, the hood is all new. It's made out of an aluminum. We've actually shaped it a little bit better for improved aerodynamics. The grill and fascia are all new. The grill's a little bit more aggressive than what you see on other Tahoes. The fascia has a lower air dam. That's to improve aerodynamics. We've also eliminated the tow hooks as well as the fog lamps, closed all this area out so the air flows nicely around the side of the vehicle. Now let's go around to the sides. Well, now we've made our way over to the side of the vehicle. Let's see what's unique here, starting with the tires and wheels. They are an 18-inch aluminum, high-polished wheel, lightweight, also designed for improved aerodynamics. They are mated to 18-inch on-off-road, low-rolling resistant tires, again, for improved fuel economy. The hybrid badge prominently located on the fender identifies this vehicle as being unique. We've also added a graphic along the side of the doors. Again, an effort just to be able to demonstrate folks they are driving something new and different. The assist steps have integrated spats both on the fender as well as back here on the door. Again, improving aerodynamics. And finally, on the roof of the vehicle, what you'll notice is there is no roof rack. We did that to eliminate mass, to improve the weight, as well as to improve the slipperiness of the vehicle going down the road. So now let's take a look at the rear. Well, now that we're at the back of the vehicle, let's talk about what's new here. Starting with this spoiler. It's new, so is this D-pillar applique, as are the tail lamps. The tail lamps actually integrate LED stop lamps for reduced energy consumption. And also, there's a new rear fascia. Now, what you'll notice here is there's a very sharp, crisp line along all of these components. What that does, it reduces drag. It lets the air flow cleanly off the back of the vehicle, again, improving fuel economy. And lastly, this liftgate is new. It's made out of aluminum, just like the hood, for mass savings. We also integrated a fixed rear glass, again, to reduce weight. So now let's take a look at the inside of the vehicle. Well, starting with the driver's seat. We've got an all-new driver's seat and front passenger seat in these vehicles, and we did this for a couple of reasons. We did what we call a thin profile, low mass seat, and you'll notice here how thin this profile is. It's actually an industry first. It's an aluminum structure. We saved about 20 pounds for the entire vehicle just by executing these seats alone. They are always leather. They're heated front seats. They're six-way power adjuster, manual and lumbar. So now let's get in and see what else we have on the inside. Okay, let's see what we've done to the inside of this vehicle to give the driver some information. First off, we start with a nav radio. It comes standard in all hybrids, and we did this for primary reason of showing a menu screen with the hybrid display. Power, we call it the power flow diagram. This, at this instance, the vehicle is off, but what this display will show is the various operating modes, and we'll see it in a minute. But it has various screens from engine idle, auto stop, hybrid power, engine power, and even battery charging. So you'll know what the vehicle is doing at any given time. Now let's look at the cluster. Okay, now in addition to the nav radio, we actually have two gauges that tells us more information about how the hybrid operates. Let's start with a tachometer. You see this auto stop position. That is where the tachometer needle will go when the engine shuts off to save fuel, even though the vehicle is actually powered on. Likewise, in the driver information center, located in the bottom half of the tachometer, we've got a screen in there. It says V8 mode. If they, we are actually moving or had the vehicle on, it would also say the words auto stop mode to indicate that the engine is off. And while we're driving, it's either going to be in V8 mode or V4 mode, depending on how many cylinders are activated in the engine itself. And then finally, there's an economy gauge. And what you'll notice here, it's a very simple gauge. It's got a needle point in at 12 o'clock. If you can keep that needle pointed between 11 and 1 o'clock, that solid green band, we're maximizing our fuel economy. But in the instance where you need power, what's going to happen is that needle's going to swing far to the right, indicating that you're compromising your fuel economy, but you're getting the power you're looking for. And likewise, if it, you brake very hard, you're losing the opportunity to recharge your brakes through the regenerative braking system. What's happening there is we're dissipating heat out into the environment, losing that opportunity to capture that inertial energy and recreate electricity to charge the batteries. So if you learn to brake and accelerate smoothly, you'll actually adjust your driving uh, type and schedule to maximize that fuel economy you're looking for. Now let's take a look at the rear seat. First off, as you notice, we've got three across seating back here and likewise in the third row seat. So this vehicle sits eight people and might add, it's very comfortable. When we did these thin profile seats, we actually added an inch and a half of rear seat knee room. As you can see here, I'm six foot tall. I've got plenty of space. And we've added an inch of foot room as well. Now let's take a look at what's underneath this seat. What you'll notice 
when I flip this seat up, is a nice flat load floor. Underneath this cover is actually that 300 volt battery pack. We actually call it an energy storage system. Now, one thing you notice is we very smartly integrated a step here, so it makes it easy to get into that third row seat. Let me show you how. Okay, well now that I'm back here in this third row seat, as you can see, occupant space for three individuals, but one last surprise we came up with, and it's back here on this quarter trim. It's actually a standard 110 volt, three prong outlet, 150 watts, now that won't run a microwave or a blender, but it will run a power, uh, power a laptop and it'll, it'll drive a Game Boy system. So for those long trips you wanna use your computer, it's actually a very nice feature. Well, that pretty much wraps up the vehicle itself. So let's go back inside.